Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and I'd like to show you how easy it is to make a zipped pouch like this, or this, that once it's empty, it flattens quite easily so you can store it. Now these have got box sides to them. Um, essentially what you can do is you can make a flat pouch like this, which is great for storing makeup wipes, makeup brushes, and then we just tuck in the corners to puff it up a bit. It is very easy to make. I know you love the makeup bag um, videos that we've done before, and this one is just as simple as that first one. So, grab yourself two pieces of fabric, and these are uh, 14 inches by 10 and a half inches. So you've got a nice cotton print at the front, which I really should have ironed before I came on, and you've got a piece of lining the same size. If you get yourself a zip that is about nine inches long, because what you want, I'll just take these end caps off a minute, you need to leave a goodly amount of fabric at either end of the zip. This is because you're going to join the bags at the sides and you don't want the zip to get in the way. But to make sure that it's really neat, we've got some strips of fabric here that are about an inch wide by about three inches. I've just folded in the ends and glued them with a bit of, um, you know, dry glue stick. Fold them over the ends of the zip, pin them in place. Oh, stab yourself with the pin as you do so. Always good. Same at this end. And I, it would help if you unzip the zip to do the top end of the zip. So it stops the pull getting in the way. Pin that. Another loose pin. And then just top stitch across the end. Now this is a plastic zip apart from the pull on it. So I know I'm going to be quite safe sewing through it. If your zip has got a metal stopper at the end of it, just take care not to run your needle straight over the metal stopper because you will break your needle. There's no, no two ways about it. Same with this side. And the point of putting these pieces of fabric on the end of the zip is it lengthens your zip to the width of your fabric, but it also makes it much, much easier to, to stitch because you don't have to worry about the teeth. Now, while we're on the subject of teeth, I'm going to change my normal um, all-purpose foot to a, a zipper foot so that I can get in close and then we will begin by putting your two pieces of fabric together like this open up your outer have to think about this lay your zip on the lining so that the zip pull will be facing the right side of your fabric. And then just pin along this edge. I'm just going to close that zip a minute. Here we go. Now, as usual, I have put my zipper foot on the wrong way round. With your zipper foot, you, you can have it for either a left hand or a right hand. I uh, didn't do it the right way. Let's just change that. And then what you can do is you can sew the zip to the fabric nice and close to the teeth without it causing you any problems. Just double check before you put this on that you haven't left your machine on a zigzag, otherwise, again, you'll break the needle. Lock stitch it in place. And my zip is here, and my needle is running about two mil to the right of it. Now, 
Now, when you get close to where the zip pull is, there is no way that you're going to be able to sew past that zip pull without it causing any problems. So what I suggest you do is make sure your needle's in the fabric, lift the foot, and from the inside, just open that zip pull to an area of the zip that you have already stitched. Sometimes you need three hands because sometimes you need to lift your foot extra high while you're unzipping it. Lay your fabric back down straight again. And continue. Now if you struggle to do that, there's no reason why you can't just lock your stitching off, take the whole thing out of the machine, unzip it slightly, and then start again. But then what you have is your lining and your outer completely enclose the uh, webbing of, the, of your zip. And then I'm just going to pin this, because I'm just going to top stitch for a neater finish. And this is where I'm going to move my zipper foot to the other way around because my teeth are going to be on the right hand side of the zip instead of on the left hand side. Undo the zip. Top stitch to the zip before you do it back up again just to clear it out of the way. And then carry on. So you've completed half of the bag. You just need to open it out again, grab the remaining webbing edge of the zip, and again, making sure that the front of the zip is facing the right side of your printed fabric, sandwich it between your fabric and your lining again. And because the sides of your bag are open at the minute, you don't have to worry about leaving any gaps for turning in the lining. You can have it as one continuous fold of fabric, which is quite nice. It's a much neater finish on the inside of the bag, um, especially if you like, you know, funky linings inside your makeup bags or your, you know, handy pouches. So don't forget to change your zip foot back to the other side. and then run all the way down here again. When you get to a convenient spot, just undo that zip again. Line all your fabric edges back up and continue sewing to the end. Like so. And then you can turn it the right way round by just turning your outer printed fabric around and over the lining. Like so. Flip your foot back to the other side of the zip foot. Take your accessory drawer off. Let's just put that there. And if you undo your zip fully, you should. And I know this works because I have done this on an exactly same sized sample. So if it doesn't work this time, it's just me having really bad luck. Ooh. 
you should be able to top stitch along the other side of your zip. If you'd had half a brain, you'd have pinned this first. And the top stitching is just a personal choice. From a practical point of view though, it does stop your lining getting caught in the zip sometimes. I don't know about you, but you know, if you've got a thick winter coat on and it's got a lining that's quite thin, if you're not careful how you do it up, you get the lining caught in the zip and then you get trapped in your coat forever. You can't get out of it. So, there you go. That's the start of your bag. And then to sew it together, now you could either have this as a simple pencil case and sew down those sides like that, turn it inside out and sew it as a French seam. But because I'm going to do this as a, um, a bag that folds flat, I need to find the bottom centre of my bag. So I'm going to fold it on the zip, pin it on the bottom fold, just through one layer of fabric so that I can then open it up and line that pin up with the centre center of the zip tape, like so. Now you'll see that all my seams aren't matching up particularly cleanly, absolutely no matter whatsoever because I've made this bag big enough to be able to trim off some excess fabric because I know from experience it doesn't matter how square you cut your fabric, how carefully you pin it, it will shift. So, let's pop my accessory tray back in. There's something stopping like this. I don't know what it that will do. And let's change the zipper foot. I don't know why that isn't. Oh, there you go. Just temperamental. So, put your normal um, all purpose foot back on there and stitch down on the outside of the fabric with about a 5mm seam allowance. And what that 5mm will do is that will then cover all bases. If your fabric is out slightly, it makes sure that all the layers are sandwiched together and you don't get any sort of raw edges popping out unexpectedly. And just neaten them up with, if you have a rotary cutter and ruler, neaten them up here. And because I listen to you all, I am now starting to cut away from myself. It's taken me a long time to get in the habit of that. And let's just flip it back. The right way. And what you need to do is roll those seams because you want to make sure that you've got that seam completely out. Because when you sew it as a French seam, the worst thing is when you turn it the right way out and you realise you can still see bits of the raw edge poking out from your seam. Get your corners out properly. Like so. And then 
sew it again with a generous five mil seam allowance. Make it sort of six or seven mil, you know, just over a quarter of an inch. So you can leave it like this, which your end result will be like a flat pouch bag that you can put things in. And obviously the, the, the more you put in there, the shorter the sides will come up. But that's quite a handy size. What you can do is you can either put a box bottom on the inside, like so. So you, you squash fold. And normally when you do a box bottom, you would cut off those excess triangles. I'm not going to bother because you've got a nice, neat seam there. It's on the inside of the bag. And then if you ever do decide that actually you need to get something sort of shallower and flatter in that bag, you can always undo that seam. You know, if you're a new mum and you want to put nappies in there or baby wipes or something like that. So when you turn it the right way round, you have that nice oh, square side. Or the alternative is push out those corners really well on the, on the right side of the bag. And actually do your box bottom on the outside. Yes, that sounds strange, I'll show you why. Because then what you can do, and foolishly I haven't got anything with me, is you can, like I've done on this bag here, get yourself a little leather strip. Let's cut those ends off. And pin it, or stitch it, from point to point, and it actually makes quite a handy hanging handle. So this one, as you see, I've done the box corners on the outside. This one I haven't done them at all. And this one I've done the box corners on the inside. So you can stuff it full of whatever you want to stuff it full of. And it's a, a nice, easy to, to make bag. A lot of people are scared of zips. This is one of the easiest zip pouches that we've done. So I hope you have a go at that. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Um, we will see you very soon with some more videos. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.